going to go romping around the planet. We've been to the U.S., Canada, the Arctic. Let's go down to Australia, where we see angry Australian summer weather smashes records. So it's coming up to the end of Australia's summer, of course, where we see Australia has endured a summer of record breaking extremes, scientists said on Wednesday, with climate change tipped to increase the frequency and severity of such phenomena. Intense heat waves, bushfires, and flooding uh, plagued the summer season with more than 200 climate change records broken over the past 90 days. Um, this is the Angry Summer Report. The Angry Summer Report, quote, climate change driven largely by the burning of coal, oil, and gas is cranking up the intensity of extreme weather events. Days of extreme heat and heat waves will become even more frequent and severe in Australia and will increase the risk to critical critical infrastructure, the economy, health, and ecosystems. Oh, shit. Shut up. Anyone thinking they're going to flee to the southern hemisphere uh, to get away from this shit. From Australia to Venice. I already thought Venice was underwater, but according to this, I guess Venice uh, maybe has a few more years as Venice could be underwater by 2100 thanks to global warming. Venice is known today as the floating city, but it could disappear beneath the waters of its famous canals by the end of this century, scientists have warned. Venice and other Italian landmarks are under threat as sea levels rise by up to four feet, researchers have warned. So we go from uh, this, so we, we go from Venice to the Sea of Galilee where uh, we'd find for clueless morons who think that the Sea of Galilee is part of the ocean. No, the Sea of Galilee, if you're not familiar with this, is actually a lake. So, while the ocean's getting ready to drown Venice, Sea of Galilee water level lowest in, the cent lowest in a century. So, Jesus should have been walking across the Sea of Galilee uh, in a few years. The lake where Christians believe Jesus walked on water has declined to its lowest level in a hundred years. The Sea of Galilee, which is actually a lake, has suffered from four consecutive years of rain shortages. The situation is serious. Uh, the level is 20 centimeters. What's that? About eight inches below what experts consider acceptable, the so-called red line. And the shortage of rainfall is also affecting agriculture, the environment, and animal life in the nearby area. Then, of course, we have our 10 stories of the day about the uh, Somali famine going on. Hungry Somali families face agonizing choice. Somali mothers are facing an agonizing choice over how to divide their shrinking food supply among their hungry children that should never have been born as a devastating drought kills off livestock and leaves the Horn of Africa nation facing famine. As the drought has shriveled grass and dried up water holes, blah, blah, blah. I like this story, this sentence out of the story uh, from Muhammad Ali. <coughs> Came 
to the central city of Baidoa with his seven children. <coughs> with his seven children who should never have been born. Mohammed said he and his wife were getting weaker every day as they gave their children their share of the food. And I do not need to mention, you will not see the word overpopulation in this story as they interview couples with seven children. <clears throat> anyway, I mentioned this one. If you think it's just humans dying in Somalia, this is this story bringing water to Kenya's drought-stricken wildlife uh, about how the drought... Uh, you, you can decide whether or not how much humans uh, deserve to uh, the, the blame for, for facing famine, but here we were looking at all the other uh, sub-Saharan Africans, that are the, the few that are left, uh, that humans haven't eaten in the bushmeat trade, and they're in the same, and they're in the same damn shape. And uh, the, these damn park rangers trying to truck water in as some uh, just, just absolute desperate uh, attempt to uh, keep uh, these thousands of uh, uh, animals, everything from well, every it, it, all. Uh, and they're emptying the trucks. A GoFundMe crowdfunding page has raised over $200,000 to water the elephants. There you go. It's a good initiative, but how much water can we truck into Savo National Park? How many wells can you sink? Uh, man, even the snakes, even the snakes showing up. Uh, weeks of driving rain are needed to break the wildlife killing drought and forecasters are already gloomy about the next rainy season due this month. And so while all of those uh, people and animals are dying of the drought uh, in, uh, up there in Somalia and Kenya and Nigeria, down in Zimbabwe, deadly floods hit southern Zimbabwe, destroying many homes. Oh, God. Since December, floods have killed 248 people and left nearly 2,000 homeless in Zimbabwe. You know, if the drought don't kill you, the, uh, the floods will. This is uh, one of the major themes talked about in this excellent book, Tropic of Chaos, which I'm going to be sharing with you on Sunday. And...